Adam 12, NBC. This was a story of life at the, in the Los Angeles Police Department based on real stories, although and the end credits, they always said the names have been changed to protect the innocent. It was one of the creations of Jack Webb. It starred Martin Milner as Officer Pete Malloy, whose partner had recently passed away, and he was assigned a new cadet named Jim Reed, portrayed by Kent McCord. Reed was a young married man. The series originally was slotted Saturday evenings at 8.30 on NBC, moved around the time, moved around there were many times during the course of its seven-year run, mainly like at 8 o'clock. It was developed by R.A. Sender and Jack Webb for Universal Television and Mark 7 Limited, which was Jack Webb's own production company. Let's see. And the Bull Ones, the Lawyers. I thought the Bull Ones got its own series in 1969. Blondie, that was based on the comic strip, of course. And they tried a 30-minute TV series which aired on CBS. It starred Patricia Harty as Blondie, Will Hutchins as Dagwood, and Jim Backus as Mr. Dithers. It was produced by, let's see, Bob Mosher and Joe Connolly for Universal. Columbo. This one I'm not sure about. I thought, I don't know where's, Okay, this is Peter Falk's famous character. The Doris Day Show. CBS. This is one of the several shows in 1968 that came around featuring widows. Doris Day plays Doris Martin, who lives on a farm in Mill Valley, California, with her two sons and her father, portrayed by Denver Pyle. Produced by her husband, Marvin Melcher, or Martin Melcher, for Arwen Productions. I believe that was their own production company. Originally scheduled for 9.30 on Thursday, Tuesday evenings. Moved to Monday evenings at 9.30, as where the ratings really soared. Went through some format changes. Second season, Doris takes a job in San Francisco. She moves to San Francisco, and then in 1971, CBS came along and said, we wanted to shed this anti-Doris image that you are portraying. We want you to become a swinging single with an on-again, off-again boyfriend portrayed by Peter Lawford. The series lasted a total of five seasons. Funny you should ask, not the Byron Nelson show. Actually, it was a little bit different. It was developed by the Heater Quigley Productions and was hosted by Lloyd Thaxton. Fast Draw was one of three game shows syndicated. It was syndicated and was hosted by Johnny Gilbert, a precursor of shows like Win, Loser, Draw, or Pictionary. The Ghost and Mrs. Muir, another of those widowed series. Hope Lang moves into a beach house or on the coast or whatever it was like. And here it is. It's inhabited by the ghost of the former owner. Debuted on NBC, lasted one season, moved over to ABC and aired on Thursday evening and then Friday evening before canceled in 1970. There were a lot of shows that were canceled in 1970 that debuted this year. Another one was The Good Guys, CBS. This one featured Bob Denver and Her Herb Edelman. And this one was about two guys growing up as children and they were getting together and they got they're still together, still good friends, one a taxi driver. It was developed by a company called Talent Associates, Norton Simon. And during its second season, it was paired with another TA sitcom, Get Smart, on CBS, which came over from NBC. And it's scheduled Friday evenings at seven, beginning at 7.30 as the replacement for The Wild Wild West, which was canceled after four seasons. The Good Guys was canceled in mid-season 1970. 
and replaced my reruns of, well, there was a Tim Conway show and reruns of another TH sitcom that had aired during the 67-68 season titled He and She with Richard Benjamin and Paula Princess. Hawaii Five-0. CBS. This broke down the barrier in one way. It was the first show to be filmed entirely on location in Hawaii. It originally here starred Jack Lord as as Steve McGarrett and James MacArthur as his partner. Produced by CBS and Leonard Freeman Productions. Freeman passed away in the early 1970s. The series was originally scheduled Wednesday nights at 10 p.m., moved to Tuesday nights at 8.30, ended up Thursday nights at 9 o'clock. When it ended in 1980, it had achieved the honor of being the longest-running crime series at the time. That record was shattered and broken in, 2000, or in um, 2003 when, or 2000, the fall of 2002 when NBC renewed Dick Wolf's Law & Order for a 13th season. Here come the brides. ABC. Robert Brown moves to Seattle, Washington in the 1870s, along with his two, son, two younger brothers, portrayed by David Soule and Bobby Sherman. They are best known for their musical, perhaps best known for their musical careers, at least Bobby Sherman was, having recorded several top 10 hits for Metro Media Records. Despite his last name, David Soule was actually perceived more as an actor, as, and it wasn't until his success as in the 1975 police drama Starsky and Hutch that his, he had success in recording as he topped the charts with Don't Give Up on Us. This was developed by Screen Gems and lasted two seasons. It was scheduled Friday evenings at 9 p.m. Here's Lucy. Lucille, CBS, Lucille Ball plays Lucy Carter, a widower of two children, teenage children. And she works for her brother-in-law's employment agency. Gail Gordon co-stars as Harrison Otis Carter. Also on the program, her real-life offspring, Lucy Ardez and Desi Ardez Jr., Developed by Lucille Ball Productions in association with Paramount Television <clears throat> and lasted, at least for the first season anyway, and lasted six seasons. Scheduled Monday nights at 8.30, moved to 9 p.m. in 1971. What was the, but some of you may be thinking, well, this, this why did this, re, this replace the Lucy show? Well, there was a reason for that. When Lucille Ball sold Desi Lou to Paramount Studios in February 1967, she wanted to maintain creative control over the Lucy show, so she decides to end production in 1968 after six seasons. It takes a thief. Well, this was the espionage series. I don't know. It, it was like a mid-season series. It bounced around the ABC schedule for three years. It starred Robert Wagner and was produced by Universal Television. These next three, that I'm four really, that I'm going to talk about were all supplied by 20th Century Fox Television, which had a big bonanza. And it, well, pardon the pun, in 1968, wouldn't have these many, such new, so many new series until... 1983, Journey to the Undold, ABC. Not much I can tell you about that one. I think it aired on Thursday nights. Julia, this was one of those groundbreaking shows. Diane Carroll stars as a nurse, Julia. Diane Carroll was one of the first black the first black women to headline a primetime series. She had a she was a widower, widower with a young son. I think he was like five years old. He was portrayed Corey. He was portrayed by by Mark Coppage, and. Apparently, Coppage had to learn how to read before he was able to start memorizing, learning his lines. Let's get this aired on NBC for two seasons, Tuesday nights at 8.30. Lancer, CBS. Yes, another of, wid another of those widower-based programs. This time, it was a pale imitation of Bonanza. 
Andrew Dugan stars as Murdoch Lancer, who has two widowed sons. He runs the ranch. I think this was modern day, uh, a modern day drama. And it lasted, aired Tuesday nights at 7, 34, two seasons. Samuel Peoples was the producer. Land of the Giants, ABC, developed by Irwin Allen, aired Sunday nights at 7 p.m. Up, replacing another Irwin Allen classic, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. Lasted two seasons. Mayberry RFD. This was more of a direct successor to the Andy Griffith Show, CBS. In fact, on the debut episode, we see Sherrod Taylor tying the knot with Miss Crump. Ken Berry stars as Sam Jones. He is a town councilman. George Lindsay returns as Goober, owner of the local filling station. Annie Griffith, executive producer, General Foods sponsor. Lasted three seasons and was gone in for two, two factors led to its dismissal. The infamous rural purge of 1971 and the fact that CBS had to relinquish a half hour and give it back to its local stations. The Mod Squad, ABC. Let me get this straight. Okay, Michael Cole, Clarence Williams III, and Peggy Lipton are three young, young people assigned to a crime special crime scene or special crime department. Teed Andrews as their boss, Captain Adam Greer. Originally aired Tuesday nights at 7.30, moved to Thursday nights at 8 p.m. in 1972 and remained there until its cancellation in 1973. The name of the game, NBC. It was an Eric Spelling production, Danny Thomas production, by the way. The name of the game, NBC. Alternate weeks, we see Gene Barry, Robert Stack, and in the first season, Tony Franciosa doing investigative reports for Crime Magazine. It aired Friday evenings from 8.30 to 10 p.m. It is best known for the haunting theme music by Dave, Dave haunting theme by Dave Bruson. Lasted, I think they lasted, it lasted three seasons. It was produced by Universal Television. The New Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, NBC, aired Sunday nights at 7 p.m. Produced by Hanna-Barbera, which was one of the rare attempts of Hanna-Barbera to go into prime time. Lasted one season. Let's see. One Life to Live. Oh, The Outcasts. ABC. Two, well, there were two, well, well two, a black and a white that were running from the law or whatever, and, um, Otis Young was one of those actors, one of the stars. It was produced by Screen Gems. It aired 9 p.m. on 8, 9 p.m. Monday nights and was canceled after one season. I actually saw reruns of The Outcasts popping up a few years ago on Get TV. The Outsider, NBC, aired Wednesday nights, produced by Roy Huggins for Universal Television. That's much I can tell you about that one. Hey, Cards, a game show hosted by Art James. I've read several source, several things about this program, but one kind of stuck out with me. There was never any mention of Metro Media handling distribution. It was always references to Taft Broadcasting. And um, I don't know, Taft Broadcasting. And I think somebody said Kaiser got involved, but... Uh, Show lasted six months. Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In, NBC, premiered January 1968, Monday nights at 8 p.m. It was the replacement for The Man from UNCLE and became the top-rated show that season in the 68-69 as well as the 69-70 season. So, don't know too much about that. That's life. ABC, aired Tuesday nights at 10 p.m., a variety hour. Well, the, the title has actually been used a couple times subsequently as a game show pilot for Nipsey Russell and locally here as a information as an informational program hosted by our old flam, uh, writer vibrant personality Robin Swoboda. 
the ugliest girl in town, ABC, Thursday nights, 8.30. Peter Kastner plays Tim Blair. He's a young executive whose girlfriend is always out of town, so to get close to her, he decides to pose as a fashion model named Timmy Blair. Probably one of the dumbest concepts that Screen Gems ever developed. The under And let's see, what's my line when the... Daily syndication in 1968 after ending its long run on CBS in 1967. There you have it. That's a look at a lot of the American television debuts from 1968. And hopefully next time we'll be doing 1969. We invite you to make any comments of any of the shows that we talked about.